Okay, um, for years, Royal Rangers have been trying very hard um, to obtain um, CCA points for our Rangers activities. Um, parents, and I think most of us here, we always have this problem where the child has to juggle between CCA in schools and at the same time Royal Rangers on Saturday on Sundays. And then we know that time is such a precious commodity where a child in secondary school is concerned. Um, we are very thankful that this year God has put us in such a place that there's this NYAA uh, program that we Rangers can latch on to that at the same time for a Royal Ranger to fulfill an internationally recognized award and at the same time do his BMA, SMA and GMA. Uh, right now we have Commander Evelyn from Outpost 12 to share with us her success story. No, Outpost 12 success story. Yeah, it's Outpost 12 success story, not mine. <laughs> Hey, good evening everybody. Um, I'm here today because my senior commander is outstation and my group commander is um, enjoying his anniversary, his wedding anniversary, so I have to stand in. Okay. All right. Um, this year has been very exciting for our post 12, especially the ER groups. We started off at the beginning of the year with 18 ERs. We still have about 15 to 16 coming regularly. Um, this year we embark on the NYA program after much prayer and seeking the Lord and for directions because I think as what Commander Julie said, we have always struggled. Um, you know, losing secondary school students to CCAs to whatever else that's happening in their life. Um, okay, today basically I'm going to talk a little bit about NYA, what it is, and then uh, we're going to look at what's the synergy between Rangers program and NYA. And I'm going to briefly talk to you about uh, requirements in achieving NYA Bronze, Silver and Gold Awards. And then um, there are also steps on how you can start this NYA program at your outpost. Next. Okay, next. All right. NYA Awards was launched 17 years ago by the late uh, President Wee Kim Wee. Um, its aim is to basically encourage young people between the age of 14 and 25 to develop personal qualities um, of self-reliance, perseverance, and a sense of responsibility to themselves, to the society, and to the nations. So those of you who are below 25, listen up, okay? This is gonna be for you too, okay? Right? So there are three levels of the awards. Um, bronze, the minimum start age is 14, set two onwards. Silver is 15, and gold is 16, okay? Now, let me just briefly mention, just mention that um, as what Commander Julia said, this is an internationally recognized award, all right? It's associated with the Duke of Edinburgh Award, and it's operating in 13, uh, sorry, 130 countries under various titles, okay? Now, for the CCA point portion, for bronze, they're gonna start out with two points. For silver, they add one more, one more point, and gold, they will add another point. So a total of four points will be given for gold awards. Okay. Now, I think most of the schools nowadays, at the max, you can get, what, five points, six points? So this has covered quite a bit of stuff for them already. And this is also applicable for those um, of you who have uh, homeschooling kids. You can also benefit from this without having to go to school, and you, know, you don't have CCA for the homeschool kids. Okay. All right, criteria of, um, for the awards, basically it's a self-improvement effort, okay? And basically the um, candidates, it's a personal challenge to them, all right? It's not a competition with your classmates or with your friends or whatever. Now, this, um, the Singapore government actually puts a lot of value on the awards. Um, for the bronze and silver awards, they actually have a minister to do the presentation. And for the goal, it's actually presented by the president and hence the president's awards that we hear of just before, usually they will announce the goal awards just before National Day every year, okay? I think this year, we have four recipients for the goal awards. Now, we also hear that um, nowadays when students apply for scholarships, especially PSC, they no longer put any, I mean, they no longer focus on the academic results because after all, if you can apply, 
it means you are one of the top students. And we hear um, reports earlier this year that um, when the candidates go for interview, they actually ask them, what did you do outside of the school time? And how, what are you contributing back to your society and back to your community? So with this program, with our rangers, they are serving the community, they are serving their nations and serving their friends also. So this is actually very good for them. Okay, next. Okay, last week we just received notification from NYA Council that the next award is going to happen on 19th of November, all right, um, at Singapore Poly. Now, next. These are the 11 candidates for the bronze awards from our post 12. We started with 13. Two of them didn't make it uh, for whatever reason, but 11 made it. And some of you might recognize some of the names. Five of them actually attended ATC. So ATC contributed to their effort in achieving these bronze awards. Very quickly, let's look at some of the synergies um, between Royal Ranger program and NYAA. Now we are all very familiar with this. Uh, Royal Ranger's vision, mission is to reach, teach, and keep kids for the lot. Okay, and the four gold points, the four red points, the eight blue points, we all know this by heart, okay? And uh, basically, the heartbeat of Royal Ranger is youth ministry, developing the total person for physical, mental, spiritual, and social uh, purpose. And um, to be successful in every area of their life, all right? To be um, having a servant leader attitude to serve the community. Next. Okay. The bronze and silver requirements um, please don't be scared of because it's not that hard because we are already doing it every week, honestly speaking. It didn't take a lot more effort than what we are already doing in running Rangers program. Okay, first, one of the first requirement is service. Okay, this is to learn how to be, to get, to give useful service to others. In our outpost, basically we focus on youth and community work and that's patrol system. <coughs> that we run in, in Royal Rangers. Um, the patrol guide, assistant patrol guide, the scribe, the quartermaster, you are serving your own patrol mates. So this is already service, okay? Next is adventurous journey. This one, hands down, Rangers, no problem. The camp that we go through year in, year out. The minimum requirement for, for bronze is only two days, one night. You send them to ATC, <laughs> more than enough, okay? Next is skills. A DPC enough, yes. DPC enough. <laughs> okay, skills. It's to encourage the development of personal interests and practical skills. Now, in our outposts for our ERs this year, we concentrated on cooking. Why? Because we find that this is a skill that they can practice, they can learn, and they can serve you know, during our, for instance, our outpost cookouts, you know, they can do the cooking camps, they can do the cooking, and then also they can help out at home. All right, those are also counted. Okay, next. Physical recreation. Um, I'm sure all of us on our programs, we will put aside, what, 20, 30 minutes every week for them to play games, run around and do things. So basically, this is uh, physical recreation already, and we actually focus on keep fit as the general term. You can always concentrate on uh, a particular game, badminton, tennis or whatever, but because if you focus on specific games or activities, you are limiting all your rangers to be doing the same thing. By doing keep fit, we basically let them play what, uh, captain's ball, whatever ball that they play and you know, things that they do. So it's basically keep fit, right? Even if you let them out and run around the, the area, that is also keep fit. So it's actually a very easy, <laughs> it's a very easy 